साइड में रखने के लिए कैसे नहीं नहीं वो तो बिल्कुल नहीं है कुछ हाइट में चाहिए एक ऐसे रखिए कभी कभी नहीं नहीं छोटा होगा हाइट में ना कुछ नहीं नहीं ऐसे उल्टा रिकॉर्ड होगा अच्छा रिकॉर्ड हम वैसे के पिक्स देते हैं तो वो हाइट से मुझे कुछ ऊंचा ऑब्जेक्ट कुछ ला रहे हैं हाँ ला रहे हैं Where the children हाँ बच्चे कहाँ हैं Where are the children They went to friends They went to friends तो वो कुछ ऊंचा हाइट में लाये ना Oh, 
Nitya Bhaya Bhavanaya Sitashya Samam Vimohayati Bir Apiyat Vedeti How is the translation? Queen Kunti says, My dear Krishna, Yashoda took up a rope to bind you when you committed an offence and your perturbed eyes over flooded with tears and washed the mascara from your eyes and you were afraid though fear personified is afraid of you. This sight is bewildering. Shiva Prabhupada's purport. Here is another explanation of the bewilderment created by the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme in all circumstances. As already explained, here is a specific example of the Lord being the Supreme and at the same time a plaything in the presence of his pure devotee. The large pure devotee renders service unto the Lord out of unalloyed love only. And while discharging such develop such devotional service, the pure devotee forgets the position of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord also accepts the loving service of his devotees more relishably when the service is rendered spontaneously out of pure affection without anything of reverential admiration. Generally, the Lord is worshipped by the devotees in a reverential attitude. But the Lord is meticulously pleased when the devotee, out of pure affection and love, considers the Lord to be less important than himself. The Lord's pastimes in the original abode Goloka Vrindavan are exchanged in that spirit. The friends of Krishna consider him one of them. They do not consider him to be of reverential importance. The parents of the Lord, who are all pure devotees, consider him a child only. The Lord accepts the chastisements of the parents more cheerfully than the prayers of the Vedic hymns. Similarly, he accepts the reproaches of his fiancés more palatably than the Vedic hymns. When Lord Krishna was present in this material world to manifest his eternal pastimes of the transcendental realm of Goloka Vrindavan as an attraction for the people in general, he displayed a unique picture of of subordination before his foster mother Yashoda. The Lord in his naturally childish play, playful activities used to spoil the stock butter 
of Mother Yashoda by breaking the pots and distributing the contents to his friends. And, and playmates, including the celebrated monkeys of Vrindavan who took advantage of the Lord's munificence. Mother Yashoda saw this and out of her pure love she wanted to make a show of punishment for her son, for her transcendental child. She took a rope and threatened the, the Lord that she would tie him, tie him up as is generally done in the ordinary household. Seeing a rope in the hands of Mother Yashoda, the Lord bowed down his head and began to weep just like a child and tears rolled down his cheeks, washing off the black ointment smears about his beautiful eyes. This picture of the Lord is adored by Kunti Devi because she is conscious of the Lord's supreme position. He is feared, often by fear personified, yet he is afraid of his mother who wanted to punish him, just as in ordinary manner Kunti was conscious of the exalted position of Krishna, whereas Yashoda was not. Therefore Yashoda's position was more exalted than Kunti's. Mother Yashoda got the Lord as her child and the Lord made her forget altogether that her child was the Lord himself. If Mother Yashoda had been conscious of the exalted position of the Lord, she would certainly have hesitated to punish the Lord. But she was made to forget this situation because the Lord wanted to make a complete gesture of childishness before the affectionate Yashoda. This exchange of love between the mother and the son was performed in a natural way and Kunti remembered the scene, was bewildered and she couldn't, she could do nothing but praise the transcendental maternal love. Indirectly, Mother Yashoda is praised for her unique position of love, for she could control even the all-powerful Lord as her beloved child. Om Jnana Tamaram Dasyam Kimnam Chana Shavakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadakti Swapadam Dikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajakam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajevam Sakvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chakapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari 
वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणामि हरि प्रिय वंचक उपाध्यक्ष कृपा सिंधु का एवच पति का नाम पवाने जो वैष्णव जो नमो नमः नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामले नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवानी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासदे गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे तो कुन कुन थी इस डिस्क्राइबिंग Lord Krishna's pastimes and how they are very bewildering. Certainly, Lord Krishna performed many pastimes which are difficult for the common people to understand. Although everyone has love for Krishna. The love, that love for Krishna, is covered because our hearts are covered by the ignorance, by the identification with the material energy. So we have to awaken that love for Krishna. Mother Yashoda is a liberated soul. She's an eternal associate of Lord Krishna. Whenever Lord Krishna comes. Into this world, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj will come as his mother and father. Although they did not actually give birth to Krishna in some sense, but actually they are eternally Krishna's mother and father, and they are the ones to enjoy the childhood pastime. Mother, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj uh, have yoga, they are influenced by yoga maya and under the influence of yoga maya they see Krishna simply as their child. They do not think of Krishna as God. This is the nature of the inhabitants in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, all the devotees in Vrindavan, they simply love Krishna, not because he's God. They're not thinking that he's God. They just love Krishna. They have a natural attraction to Krishna, and that attraction is the most in the in the heart of Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda loves her child. More than anything else, she is always thinking of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna loves Mother Yashoda. There is a reciprocation between the Lord and His devotees. Lord Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala. He reciprocates with the devotees according to their devotion. Not according to their work, or according to their knowledge, but according to their devotion. So, Mother Yashoda is constantly devoted to Lord Krishna, and we see this uh, wonderful pastime, which is described here by Queen Kunti, how Mother Yashoda is able to bind up Lord Krishna. Shiva Prabhupada was talking about this pastime, and he was saying that it's common in uh, the Hindu, in, among the families in, in, the, in the past, in the little children, the mother would get a rope and just tie them up so that they couldn't run far away. Right? And if you have a rope on them, then they can't go very far. 
So this was the idea of Mother Yashoda taking a rope to tie up Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna, of course, had been chased by Mother Yashoda because he'd been distributing the butter to everyone. So Mother Yashoda didn't want any more butter being wasted. So she thought, better if I can tie him up, it will stop all the damage which he's doing. So Lord Krishna enjoys these dealings with his devotees. People often, or common people, they are not able to understand these pastimes of Lord Krishna. They think, just see Krishna's just an ordinary person. Yes, he's an ordinary person. He comes to play the part like a child, but at the same time, he's not a child of this material world. He's a child of his pure devotee. And he displays the pastimes of the personality of Godhead. And just like one day Balaram complained to Mother Yashoda, Lord Krishna is eating dirt. And so Mother Yashoda called Krishna and she asked him, have you been eating dirt? And Krishna replies that, oh no, mommy, Balaram is angry with me, he is jealous. And so Mother Yashoda said, then open your mouth and let me see. And when he opened his mouth, then Mother Yashoda saw the whole universe in her child's mouth. So that is the nature of Lord Krishna. That even when he does things, he does the, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is not an ordinary child. Just like when he became the charioteer for Arjuna. He was the charioteer of Arjuna. But when Arjuna requested him to show his form, then, then Lord Krishna revealed the Vishwarup. He revealed his form in the universe. And then he appeared in his forearm form. And then at the request of Arjuna, then he again assumed his two-arm form. So this is the past tense of the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna is enjoying all of these activities. He's enjoying picking up the Govardhan Hill. He enjoys killing the different demons who came to kill him and giving them mercy, liberating them from the material world. <laughs> Lord Krishna enjoys having relationships with his devotees. So, we also want to develop this, this kind of mood, just like Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they enjoy being the parents of Lord Krishna. So, as devotees, we also have some relationship with Krishna, and we are encouraged to cultivate the mood of some of one of these devotees, either as a servant, Dasharas, in Vrindavan, there are servants like Raktak and uh, Badrak, Patrak, these are Krishna's servants in Vrindavan. In Dwarka, he has servants like Daruga, who is his chariot driver. So Dasyaras, that is one of the relationships with Lord Krishna. And then there is Sakyaras, like the cowherd boys enjoy being friends with Lord Krishna. They enjoy playing with Krishna, climbing on his back and wrestling with him, and sometimes stealing his food. This is Satyaras. Uddhava, he enjoys also friendship with Lord Krishna, but Uddhava's relationship with Krishna is of a different nature. Uddhava never considers himself equal to Krishna. Uddhava would never sit on the same level as Lord Krishna. That Lord Krishna would still treat Uddhava like his friend. And he would ask Uddhava for advice. What do you think, Uddhava? 
what should we do? So Uruba had a relationship of friendship, but at the same time, not with friendship on the intimacy as the coward boys of Vrindavan, who were totally equal to Krishna, and they, they could climb on Krishna's back and touch Krishna with their feet. But Uddhava was always dealing with Lord Krishna with respect, while there was still some friendship there. And then you have parents. Lord Krishna had parents like Nanda and Yashoda. Prabhupada was explaining to us in the purport here how uh, Mother Yashoda's position is more exalted than that of Kunti because Mother Yashoda, she can only see Krishna as her child and she can chastise him, and she can tie him up, she can run after him and capture him. Queen Kunti is amazed to see these pastimes but this is a relationship which Krishna is enjoying with Mother Yashoda. Kunti is the aunt of Krishna, but at the same time she knows the position of Lord Krishna. She understands that Lord Krishna is the original person and the origin of everything. So she's very conscious that when she looks at Lord Krishna, she will not look at his lotus feet because Lord Krishna is her nephew. And she, has, she wants to think of him in, in a manner which will not embarrass the Lord. And if she would look at the Lord's lotus feet, Lord Krishna would feel embarrassed, he would feel uncomfortable that, oh, she's my aunt and she's worshipping me like this. So she didn't want to put Lord Krishna into any embarrassing or uncomfortable situation. So, Mother Yashoda has such an exalted position. Vasudev and Devaki are also parents of Lord Krishna. They, of course, they gave birth in Mathura. But Vasudev and Devaki, they offer prayers to Krishna. With the birth of Krishna, then they offer prayers to the Lord. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj they never offer any prayers to Krishna because they simply think of Krishna as their child. So the position of Mother Yashoda is more exalted than even Vasudeva and Devaki and, and more exalted than Kunti. And Kunti is also related to Krishna. And then we have also the relationship of conjugal love. Like the gopis, we have the gopis of Vrindavan. You have also Lord Krishna's wives in Dwarka. You have also the goddess of, goddesses of fortune in the spiritual world. They're all enjoying a relationship of conjugal love with Lord Krishna, but in different ways. Just like the gopis, they enjoy conjugal love with. Parakyaras means without marriage. The queens in Dwarka, this is Swakya. They're, they're Krishna's wives. It's a different relationship. And the goddesses of fortune, they are also a very special relationship. That they are the eternal associates of Lord Krishna in the spiritual world. So Lord Krishna enjoys, enjoys all of these loving exchanges with his different devotees in different groups. Lord Krishna is Akila Rasamrita. He is a reservoir of all different rasas. We do not find so much exchange of rasa in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra or any other incarnation of the Lord. We only see this uh, full range of exchange of loving dealings. We only find this in the case of Lord Krishna with his devotees. So we also 
want to understand how we can also develop that kind of love for Krishna. We hear about Mother Yashoda, we hear about Vasudev, Devaki. We want to understand how we can also cultivate that kind of mood. So from the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes uh, qualification for devotional service. Yesham Pantagatam Bhapam Jananam Punya Karmanam Tetanva Moha Nirmukta Bhajanti Mam Dradavratam Persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and who are free from the reactions of sin and who are free from all kinds of delusion then they will engage themselves in my devotional service with determination. Dradavrataha, hmm. Dradavrata means with great determination. So it's a, an important verse because Lord Krishna is describing how we have to be free from sinful reactions to take up devotional service. Uh, sinful reactions come about, of course, by engaging all, in all the activities which are the influence of the Kali Yuga, the irreligious principles, the intoxication, the meat-eating, the gambling, the illicit sex, all of these things which are the pillars of sinful life then a devotee is very careful to stay far away from these things because they are a great obstacle to devotional service. So in order to get free from sinful reactions, it's not enough to just stop sinful activities, but what is required is we have to engage in devotional activity. We have to engage in acts which will help us to cultivate the mood of devotion. It's not just don't do this, don't do that. If we're all the time telling people don't do this, don't do that, then it won't be very positive. What are we supposed to do? So we, we stop the nonsense activities and we have to take up the devotional activities. And the devotional activities mean working for Krishna. Working for Krishna, decorating the deities here. Just like you can see the beautiful altars, the beautiful twin, because now is Julian Yatra. So we're celebrating these different festivals which are all there for the pleasure of the Lord. Lord Krishna, in his deity form, he enjoys the Jolanyatra, just as Lord Krishna did 5,000 years ago. At this time of the year, Lord Krishna would enjoy the Jolan. He would enjoy to sit on a swing with his eternal consort, Srimati Radharani, and the divine couple would enjoy swinging in the forests of Vrindavan because at this time of the year very hot very hot and you feel refreshed when you sit on the swing and go back and forward and then the cooling breeze is there from being on the julan from being on the swing the cooling air is there so Lord Krishna would take pleasure in that and the different aroma, the flowers, the different scents from the different plants which are growing there in the forest of Vrindavan, Lord Krishna can enjoy them as they move on the swing back and forth. So this is how we serve Lord Krishna. This is the positive side. It's not just give up the nonsense things, but it's do the good things, do things which will give pleasure to Krishna. 
we have senses and our senses are meant for the service of Krishna. People don't know how to use their senses properly. These senses are given to us by the grace of the Lord and we're meant to use them for Krishna's pleasure. Out of ignorance we only think about our own sense gratification and based on ignorance then people will engage in sinful activities and as they engage in sinful activities they become more and more entangled in the material nature and go deeper and deeper into the darkness of ignorance. But when we use our senses for the pleasure of Krishna, we get purification. We become purified and we, we start to awaken our natural attraction for Krishna. Just like we were worshipping Krishna this evening, we performed arti and then we worshipped also that we, put, we, had, we, put, we pushed the julan and we enjoyed seeing the divine couple swing. So th this is the pleasure of the devotee, performing everything for the pleasure of Krishna. We use this big, beautiful, spacious room for the worship of Krishna. And we come together here to chant the glories of Krishna and to hear about his different activities, his different paths. We're hearing about Lord Krishna's different activities, how Lord Krishna is engaging in these acts for the pleasure of his devotees. It is all transcendental loving affairs. Mother Yashoda takes great pleasure in dealing with her son. She's, she cannot stop thinking of her son. It is the nature of these pure devotees that they're always absorbed in thought of Lord Krishna. Not only Mother Yashoda, all the pure devotees. I was reading about the Yadu dynasty, Lord Krishna's Yadu dynasty in Dwarka. Lord Krishna, of course, had been approached by Lord Brahma. Mother Bhumi had gone to Brahma to complain how the earth was overburdened by so many demonic kshatriyas. So then Lord Brahma then went to pray to Lord Vishnu who resides in the milk ocean on Swetadvi. And at that time, at that time Lord Vishnu told Lord Brahma and all the other demigods that I'm going to come and I will take birth in the Yadu dynasty and you should all go, you should also come and take birth in the Yadu dynasty. So all the members, all the members. <laughs> All the members of the Yadu dynasty, they were great demigods. They were com coming to take part in the Lord's pastimes. And not only were they demigods, there were also pure devotees who had come from the spiritual world. When the Lord comes, He does not come alone but he comes with so many of his pure devotees. Just like we said, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they're always Krishna's mother and father. They're Nityasiddhas. They're eternally perfect souls. They're on the highest level of spiritual realization. And they simply think of Krishna as their child. Although Krishna is the father of every living entity, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, 
they think Krishna is our child. This is the bewildering pastimes of Lord Krishna. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, uh, uh, Lord Krishna says, Parinjanaya sadhunam vinas chaya chaduskritam. Lord Krishna is describing his mission, why he comes into this world. And he said, I come to deliver the sadhus. But actually, the sadhus are already delivered. Because those who are sadhus, they're already, they're saintly persons and not ordinary people. So, Lord Krishna, does he really come to deliver the sadhus? Because these sadhus, they're already devotees, they're already great souls. Lord Krishna says, I come to, the, to get, not just to deliver the sadhus, but to give pleasure to these sadhus. Those persons who are his devotees, the Lord comes to be with them because they desire so much to be with the Lord, to have that personal association with the Lord. Therefore, the Lord comes. So this is a loving exchange again between Lord Krishna and his pure devotees. The Yadu dynasty, they cannot think of anything else except Krishna. At every moment they're thinking of him. And they're completely surrendered to Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna arranged for their departure from the world. He sent, you know, that they were all living at Dwarka after the battle of Kurukshetra, after all the pastimes had taken place. Though all the Yanu dynasty were living there on the island of Dwarka, but there were inauspicious omens. And seeing the inauspicious omens, everyone became troubled and they came to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna then instructed all of them that you should all go to Prabhakshetra and perform rituals there to counteract the inauspicious omens. So all the great Yadu dynasty, Kshatriyas, they all went over to the mainland from Dwarka. They went to Prabhakshitra and they performed rituals. They gave a lot of charity to all the Brahmanas there. But then they engaged in drinking some wine, some rice wine. They began to drink and they all became intoxicated and they all fought with each other and they killed each other. It was the arrangement of the Lord. Lord Krishna arranged for them all to depart from the world because Lord Krishna knew that the time for his departure was coming and he knew that the Yadu dynasty could not live without him. So he thought, let them leave the world first. Once they have gone, then I can also depart from the world. So it happened that the Yadu dynasty went to Prabhakshetra, they fought with each other and they annihilated each other. They all went back to their different positions. Those who were great demigods went back to the heavenly abode and those who were his eternal associates, they returned to the spiritual world. And then the Lord Krishna himself could depart from the world. So the pastimes of Lord Krishna are very bewildering to ordinary people, common people who do not understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna. They think of him as an ordinary person. Now, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj also think of Krishna as an ordinary person. But there's a big difference between how they think of Krishna as an ordinary person and how common people think of Krishna. 
common people think of Krishna as Lord Krishna himself describes in the Bhagavad Gita. Abhajananti mamudha manushitana mahasrita. The foolish mounted me descending amongst them like a human being. They do not know my transcendental nature and supreme dominion over all the beings. So common people are thinking Krishna to be an ordinary person of the material world. They think Lord Krishna takes birth. You meet some people, they will tell you, I know Krishna cannot be God, he has a mother and father. They think because he has a mother and father, he cannot be God. So they, they're thinking God shouldn't have a mother and father. But we have to understand that God is a person and he enjoys these kind of loving exchanges. He takes pleasure in having a mother and father. It's a, if, if we have something which God does not, we have a mother and father, God's not, he's not allowed to have a mother and father, then we're greater than God. We have something God doesn't have. We have to understand that whatever we have, that we have because the Lord himself, he enjoys, he has these things. And he has them in the, in the perfectional stage. His mother and father are always his mother and father. We have mother and father for some time. You grow up and you forget to, and then you become a mother and father yourself. The, the relationship changes. But Lord Krishna is enjoying these relationships eternally. He enjoys being the child of his devotees. And Lord Krishna, for his own devotees, he, he is also the child. Just like Mother Yashoda, they are in, they're seeing Krishna in that rasa. Loving exchange is there. The rasa. So, these different rasas are there in the spiritual world. Lord Krishna enjoys all of these relationships. Everything is for his enjoyment. And being afraid of Mother Yashoda, this is also for his enjoyment. He enjoys Mother Yashoda chasing him with a stick in her hand and he's crying and trembling and he's saying to his mother, Oh, put your stick down, I'm not coming back. And he's like, You've got that stick in your hand. And Mother Yashoda, she, she is of course conquered by the pure love of her child. And she puts the stick down and she wipes his eyes and she not nurses him. So Mother Yashoda only knows love for Krishna. Her relationship is filled with love. And that loving relationship is greatest in the form of the relationship between the mother and the child. That the mother has so much love for her child. And so Mother Yashoda enjoys this and Lord Krishna enjoys being given that love by his mother. It's very pleasing to her. So the, this is a bewildering pastimes as described here. Um, the Lord Krishna is, he Fear, fear personified is afraid of him, but he is afraid of Mother Yashoda. So Lord Krishna himself could kill so many different demons. Even Putana came while he was still a young baby. Putana came in the form of a great demon. Lord Krishna was not afraid of her. Rather, he encouraged her and he, he allowed Putana to take him in his arm, in her arms, and to feed him. Of course, Lord Krishna then, of course, took out the life heir, Putana. But he allowed Putana to take that part, to be his mother.
to take it, to take him in his in her arms and to offer her breast to Lord Krishna. So she was so fortunate that Lord Krishna then took her to Goloka to become one of his nurses, one of his uh, milk nurses there in the spiritual world. Of course, it doesn't mean Putana is equal to Mother Yashoda, but still she was very fortunate that Lord Krishna would take away all of her sin by accepting her breast milk, by accepting her breast, biting her breast, he took away all of her sinful reactions and she was able to go back to God then. Just like on the battlefield at Kurukshetra, it is said all the people who died in the presence of Lord Krishna, they were all liberated because in the presence of Lord Krishna, they become free of all of their different sins and in this way they'll be able to be liberated from the material world. So Lord Krishna is showing his mercy by delivering so many souls from the material world. Even though they may be enemies, they may be against the Lord, but the Lord is kind to them and he is enjoying the, the dealings with them. You know, just like the Jai and Vijay, the two doorkeepers, that they had to come to the material world and it was arranged that they would be demons because it would give the Lord an opportunity to fight with them. Because Lord Krishna likes to fight. He likes that opportunity to wrestle young boys, they do these kind of things. Young girls, they don't do it so much, but young boys, you know, they have a different nature and they play wrestle, wrestle with each other. And so, uh, Lord Krishna enjoyed to do that, and he, but nobody would like to do that. In the spirit, in Vaikuntha and Goloka, they all love Krishna so much that they cannot fight Krishna. So Lord Krishna arranges for some of them to come to the material world and to take the role of being demons. And in this way then they give great, a great opportunity for Lord Krishna to fight with them. And of, of course it happened in three different times that they, Jain Vijayan became first of all uh, Haranya Kashipu and Haranyaksha. And at that time Lord Varaha fought with Haranyaksha and then Lord Nasringadev came and he fought with Haranyakashipu and then you have them taking birth again that one becomes Ravan and the other one becomes Kumbhakam and they are killed by Lord Ramachandra great battle there and then they come again in Krishna Leela as Sishupal and Dantavakra and Lord Krishna kills Sishupal and Dantavakra also. Then they are free of the curse and they go back to the spiritual world. So Lord Krishna was enjoying these different pastimes, killing different demons. Prabhupada describes it, he said, it's like a, a pleasure excursion. Just like you go for, sometimes we will go for outings and we'll go to the forest and we'll enjoy walking in the woods and so on. So in the same way Lord Krishna would go every day with the cowherd boys and the calves. They would go into the forest of Vrindavan. But different demons would come. One day there was an Agasura demon there with his mouth wide open like a great cave. And Aga was laying there and the cowherd boys were looking at the Agatsura demon and they were thinking, what is this? And by the influence of Yoga Maya, the cowherd boys all entered into the mouth of the Agasura. And Agasura was, was waiting, he, he wanted Krishna to enter. 
and Krishna was watching and he thought, how powerful the material energy is. That such a huge, gigantic form, miles long and mouth was open like the sky. The, and the cowherd boys had walked right into the mouth of the Aga demon. So Lord Krishna, he had to also enter in because he saw the cowherd boys enter into the mouth of the demon. So he also had to enter into that demon. And then of course Agasura then closed his mouth. But when he closed his mouth, then Lord Krishna expanded himself. And when Lord Krishna expanded himself, then the demon could no longer breathe and he ended up choking. And this way Lord Krishna and all the cowherd boys, they came out of the dead body of the Aga demon. And that big body of the Aga demon lay there in the forest of Vrindavan and it became a playground for all the cowherd boys. They could climb on top of the Agasura demon and slide down the body like this. So it's all for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. And this pastime, Mother Yashoda binding up Krishna, and Lord Krishna pretending to be afraid, it's all wonderful Leela, which gives pleasure to the devotees that we enjoy hearing about it and it gave the greatest pleasure to Lord Krishna himself. Lord Krishna himself enjoys acting out the drama of being afraid of his mother, saying to his mother, Oh, don't hit me, mommy, oh, mommy. <laughs> he's crying, he's afraid of his mother, but Lord Krishna is nobody who is he afraid of. Not afraid of anyone, but it's a leela, it's wonderful pastimes. So Lord Krishna is always enjoying these pastimes. He comes to give pleasure for his devotees, and this is how the devotees get pleasure in acting all of these different pastimes with Krishna. So of course with Janmashtami coming. We will also be remembering so many of Lord Krishna's pastimes. We like to do dramas, we like to engage the devotees in different dramas, give them an opportunity to perform all of these activities. Okay, it's getting a bit late. Is there any question? <coughs> Man's, uh, like, uh, in the beginning you were explaining that everybody has a rasa with Krishna. So we also have a different rasa. As of now, what we know is that dasa rasa. So this, is this rasa, do we need to like endeavor to know it or does it come on its own? Or I mean, how do you know what is your... Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us Jivesva Rupahaya Nitya Krishna Das that we are all eternally servants of Lord Krishna. So we do want to cultivate that mood of service. And from that, from working in that mood of being the servant of Krishna, then we will get realization of further rasa. Krishna will reveal it to us. Like, we may be attracted, you know, someone may be attracted by Mother Yashoda, and we may meditate more and think more about Mother Yashoda and her activities, the different things, the different modes and activities of Mother Yashoda and taking care of Krishna. And someone else like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, they all cultivate the gopi bhava, the mood of the gopis. And they were constantly thinking of the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis. Sometimes they will be arguing about the price of the butter. You know, Lord Krishna will be telling the gopis, you have to pay tax if you're going to come this way. And, and the, 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 the devotees will be meditating and reenacting all of these incidents. They will be absorbed in that different way. So 
because different people are inspired and directly from the heart to approach Krishna in a particular rasa. Yes, it comes gradually. So the more we go on serving Krishna, because the point is that whatever rasa we're in, we're always a servant. That's always there, right? The quality of Dasya Rasa is going to be there. So we cultivate that good of being the servant. And from service to Krishna, then everything else is revealed. The higher Rasas. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, uh, so many leaders not have done so many uh, past times we keep here. Uh, like you said, God comes, then he sends the Uti Daishna Gopal and your good self to your, at this advanced stage also, trying to tell us, remember Krishna somehow, you know, trying to make us realize who we are. Uh, like Queen Kunti said at the end that, help me, prepare me, do whatever is necessary to render fit so that I can go back. So after getting so much from all of you and Shri Gopal, how do we ensure that we achieve the required success and we don't come back here? Right? We are there. We are, like you said, Prabhupada said, they treat Krishna as unimportant. We are somewhere in the middle. We 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 don't realize Krishna is yeah. Theoretically, we know. But how do we ensure that we don't take a birth again after getting so much mercy and after getting so much this thing? How do we ensure that we don't? Well, we surrender to Krishna. We have to surrender to... And the, the, the point is that we are... Surrender to Krishna means it's up to Krishna if he wants to take us back home or not. Right? It's not that we are... I've done this, I've done that, I'm qualified to go back to God. But rather we're completely surrendered to Krishna. If Krishna wants to take us back to God, then, then we will go. Wherever Krishna wants to put us, we are ready to go. That is more the mood of surrender to Bhuti. That whatever Krishna wants us to do, we will accept that position. It's not that we should think, well, I'm qualified, I've done enough, I should go back to God then. Well, we have to think, what does Krishna want? Does Krishna want us to go back to God then? He may want us to go some other place, to do some other service. We don't know. Just like they think, they told Rupa Goswami, told Prabhupada, you go, you write these books, you know, you go and write these books. You know, Prabhupada could have just stayed in Vrindavan. Could have just thought, but Rupa Goswami, you have to go, you have to go write these books, you know. So I have to do it, I have to surrender. So the devotee will accept whatever position Krishna puts him in. That is back to Godhead. And then surrender, then surrender to Krishna. It's not just go back to Godhead, but it's what does Krishna want me to do? What is how can I please Krishna? So that kind of selfless surrender, that is important for us. Krishna wants to see how much pain we're willing to take for his service. Srila Prabhupada says like that. So how much we're willing to endure for the service of Krishna. This is back to Godhead. This is, you know, wherever we are, this is not the material world. Prabhupada said, I'm not in New York. He said, I, I'm always thinking of Vrindavan. I'm always with Krishna. Although he was in New York. So, this is back to Godhead if we're Krishna conscious. Wherever we are. Narayana Parasarve Yakutasin Swanyabhidyatek Swarga apavarga narakesh vapitu yata darshana. The devotees of 
who have surrendered to the Lord, they do not see any difference between heaven and hell and liberation. They see everywhere the same. Krishna says. Okay. Yeah. 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 talking to new people, so we tell them that through Hare Krishna mantra you are pleading the Lord for service. And we also see that new people they are very keen to serve but they are not so keen for sadhana or for like chanting or like for getting up early and everything. So how do you understand that because at, at, at one side we are saying we beg for service and but then the mood of sadhana is very difficult to sort of get across. But they can they want to do sadhana? Find it difficult for them to do sadhana? They find it easier to serve but it's difficult for sadhana. Especially for new devotees. Mm -hmm. I don't know till what time are you new? I mean, just... Well, if they're doing service, then that will purify them. The more service they do, then and that's what we want, right? We want to encourage them to do service. The sadhana will come gradually. You have to be patient on these things. That's not honorable. If they have a taste for service, that's very good. And then gradually, more and more, they will become attached to something. Then, Srimad Bhagavatam says, by serving the devotees, one gains affinity for hearing the message of the body. So the more they do service, the more they get a taste for hearing. And that taste for hearing, that is the essence of sadhana. So yeah, we encourage people to do, do more service, the button to service, as much service as they can. Very nice. And gradually, gradually the sadhana will come.